Hey everyone, it's Anthony Allen Ramos. Okay, today we are taking a look at the human rights documentary called Breaking Myths from acclaimed Brazilian filmmaker Fernando Grostein Andrade. The film is shedding light on the current policies against LGBTQ people in Brazil, which is all being enforced by the country's president, Bolsonaro. The elections for Brazil are coming up on October 2nd, and I'm so excited to be chatting with Fernando and his co-director, Fernando Siqueira, um, and it is such an important time for this film, which is out right now. You can go to breakingmyths.com and it's also available on YouTube. Um, but Fernando and Fernando, very nice to meet you both. Nice to meet you, Anthony. Thanks for having us. Nice to meet you. So, uh, this is such an important film. I'm so glad that I got to see it. Um, I mentioned it's out now. And the two of you are really using this opportunity as you are on the cusp of an election to remind the rest of the world and to show the rest of the world, because I think some people don't know how horrible it can be to be an LGBTQ person in Brazil. Tell me a little bit about how you got here. And this is such a personal story, but and why now is such a crucial time to kind of open everyone's eyes. Yeah, uh, I think our film shows fragile masculinity. Uh, fragile masculinity can reach catastrophic proportions. So the same way Donald Trump was a big man to America and like how America was the moral compass of the world, or at least was uh, uh, positioning that way, uh, Bolsonaro is like a, a, a Brazilian version of Trump, which uh, happens to be even worse. So he has a rhetoric uh, against us LGBTQ, against uh, LGBTQ uh, schools. Uh, he has an endless series of like uh, racist comments, misogynist comments, and uh, basically is destroying Brazil's democracy. So for us, it's important to call attention uh, to the world about what's happening in Brazil, especially because this the, doesn't only concern Brazilian, Brazilians, but also concerns, uh, for instance, the Amazon forest, which is something that is literally important to keep the world uh, cool. And Fernando, asked, you want to add some onto that as well? Yeah, um, <clears throat> just adding on how, how important it is. Uh, the Amazon is one of the places that has the, the, big, the most biodiversity in the world. It's the biggest forest in the world. Uh, most of the flowing fresh water comes from the Amazon. We have um, also like it stores carbon. So it, it helps cool down the planet, as Fernando was saying. Mm -hmm. I also think it's an opportunity for Americans uh, to see the consequences of uh, problems that start in U.S. and travels abroad. So, for instance, the technology that Steve Bannon and other far right uh, uh, terrorists, I would say, uh, created in U.S. was adapted uh, by Jair Bolsonaro and his mob in Brazil. So I think uh, this film is also an opportunity for America to, to see a mirror uh, and see some of their mistakes, the consequences of their mistakes in other parts of the world. So we can all, uh, Brazil, U.S., uh, the whole world, uh, improve and protect basic rights as the, uh, for instance, the right of uh, LGBTQ people to exist. Fernando S., I mean, tell me about, you know, we're talking about this kind of toxic masculinity that exists in Brazil, but then how has homophobia changed throughout the generations, would you say? So uh, me and Fernando, we are from different generations. Uh, he was raised he was he grew up in the 80s 90s i was i grew up in the 2000s <laughs> so for my generation i had uh, a lot more reference in the medias of lgbtq stories and lgbtq music and artists and even politicians in brazil like Gion Willis was already a politician when i was growing up so and, and singers, right? And singers, like Taylor Swift, for example, was a big one for me when she released 1989 with like, I Know Places that is fairly queer coded or like uh, Welcome to New York, which has like, you can want who you want, boys and boys and girls and girls. Those type of things were important for me as a kid growing up to have uh, 
some type of reference that being who I am is okay. And then for Fernando, I feel like that was harder because he had the TV. He doesn't, he didn't have internet to like relate right. to in the same way I had. He did have internet, but not like he couldn't watch films in the internet like I did growing up. Right. And I think, I mean, you know, to that point with the different generations, Fernando A, you did, you know, to share so much of that on camera in this documentary, I mean, how did you get used to that? And was it something that you, I mean, had to kind of just force yourself to get comfortable with? Because it's tough. Yeah, so I, I kind of, I have some problems with documentaries that comes with only onion. Sorry, I don't know how the word in English, with a narrator that you don't know where it comes from. So, so, so like, it's like a voice of God. So we don't know the point of view of the filmmaker and feels like everything that being said is true. So I thought it was important to, to be honest with the audience about uh, like who I am, where I'm coming from. Like this is the perspective mm-hmm. of Brazilian middle-class white gay man. Uh, so the audience know where are my blind spots, you know? So for instance, the film uh, focuses a lot uh, on the LGBTQ issues, on masculinity, uh, but of course on the racial issues uh, about uh, Black issues or women's issues and environmental issues. Uh, the more the, uh, I did a big effort to to be to focus on that, but it will always be from the limitations of a, a white gay man. Mm-hmm. So my place of speech was a white gay man. So it was important for the audience to 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 be clear about that. At the same time, uh, it worked on the plot as an opposing force to the uh, uh, biography of Bolsonaro, who gets, uh, as you can see on the film, turned on by death. There is a moment that Bolsonaro raised a tripod uh, around his belly, mimicking uh, 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 whatever, uh, I don't know the word in English, uh, but like on a very phallic masculine Mm -hmm. way, you know, and Miles talking about uh, machine gun his opponent. So you see someone that is in love with the idea of death, which is the opposite of me, uh, which as a, I, I am a gay man, so I obviously love men, but not toxic or catastrophic man. The kind of masculinity that I admire is a masculinity connected to, to, to life, to poetry, and not to death. Just to level out for people, because I think this is all rooted in education about what is happening in your country as we are on the brink of a presidential election happening October 2nd. What is it like for someone who is gay or who is lesbian to live in Brazil today? I think um, there are parts uh, in Brazil that are more progressive, but other parts that are really uh, scary, just like in US, like you find uh, LA or New York, uh, kind of sanctuary for LGBTQ people to exist. But like, I would say maybe parts of North Carolina or, or other places in the U.S. are pretty scary. So Brazil is the same. But the problem is that the country lost uh, the moral compass of a, of a respectful president. And instead of the president issuing signs that is important to respect life, the president is issuing opposite signs, saying uh, disrespecting uh, the, the, the life of everybody who's not a white straight man. So this kind of undermines the state of law. So for instance, the the British journalist, Dom Phillips was killed in the Amazon together with Bruno Pereira. There was no no, no news ever about a a, a international journalist being killed on the the Amazon, sorry. So why this is happening now? Because when you see a president that is saying that you can do whatever you can, like people stop respecting the law. And Fernando as you know, talking about you being a little bit younger and having more um, media to consume when it comes to music and, and stuff. What, I mean, are, do you, would you say that people in Brazil can be public and come out or is it still very much a situation where it has to be kept pretty private. And, and you know, to even think about the way that you were able to do this film and capture video must have even been a little bit scary at times. Um, I think that people are 
um, more and more being able to come out and be who they are in Brazil as well. Uh, we are living a, a, a moment where we are kind of going backwards in that sense uh, with the president, because as Fernando was saying, with his rhetoric being very aggressive towards mm -hmm. people like that, I feel like people feel afraid to come out and to be who they are. Uh, but I think that whenever someone in the media, and there's a, a lot of people who are out and proud and um, are um, artists who are out and proud, that really validates uh, our our lives in a way that Bolsonaro is trying to invalidate our lives. Completely. And so, you know, for the both of you with this film that is going to be available, um, it is available now on breakingmyths.com and on YouTube for at least a month. I mean, what do you hope that happens? Because obviously, you know, you are trying to drive awareness with this film to, as we, as you know, October 2nd, like you said, Brazil's presidential election. What do you hope that people, whether they're Brazilian or whether they're anyone from around the country that see this film, what do you hope that happens and what do you want them to do? I think almost every LGBTQ have a family that part of the family is conservative and almost all conservative family has someone who's LGBTQ mm -hmm. uh, uh, that came out or not. So we believe this film could be an opportunity for families to sit together a watch, discuss, and like discuss uh, over facts, over stories, over uh, uh, testimonials from other people, rather from just like offending uh, each other, you know? So, so far in Brazil, we are pretty happy with the result. Almost 400,000 people already watched the film. Uh, and we, uh, the film came out only uh, Friday at, at night. So, uh, and we received, for instance, a message from a, a white straight policeman saying that the film touched his heart and helped him uh, realize a lot of stuff. I just post this on my Instagram right now. So I think a lot of the positions of people came out of sometimes fear or ignorance or like reproducing uh, erratic behaviors that our grand grand grandparents did. So that's why I think it's important for people to, to watch uh, not only this film, but many of the films that tells a, a, about the, uh, the life and the struggle of LGBTQ people, not only the sad stories, but also uh, stories of uh, resistance and survival and, and shining, you know? And that's why, for instance, we have a, a flower, in our, a pink flower in our poster to represent this uh, uh, art, delicacy, life, uh, overcoming death. And also the orchid flower represents something for Fernando personally. With, right. uh, in the film, you can see how uh, the flower helped him come through with the, the pain of, and the grief of losing his, his father when he was right. a, a kid. Well, listen, it has been a pleasure to chat with you both. And I'm so glad that you made the film. Thank you for sharing your stories. Thank you for hoping that this, you know, will be uh, a change. And, you know, I think I'll, I'll definitely be thinking of, of you all and my other Brazilian friends on the second. And hopefully, you know, things can change for you all. But um, congrats. And just a reminder, everyone, you can catch this film on breakingmyths.com. And it's also available on YouTube. Um, it is available right now.